Hello and welcome back to the Reincarnated Radio Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Stishin, and once again I'm bringing you one of the scariest, creepiest, and most skin-crawling tales of terror that the Golden Age of Radio had to offer. This week, we go back to the Peter Lorre-led vehicle, Mystery in the Air, about an innkeeper, her husband, and the mysterious new tenant they just rented a room to. This week, the cast of Pat Dwyer, Amanda Polcini, Lacey Jo Sloat, and myself reincarnate The Lodger, which originally aired on August 14th, 1947. So turn off the lights, gather round, and if you get scared, just remember, these tales scared your grandpappy first, and enjoy the Reincarnated Radio Podcast. All right, men. I guess that's all. Put them on the stretcher and take them to the morgue. Must I stay, Inspector? For a while, Mrs. Bunting. I need all the details for the report. That such a thing could have happened here. Here in my own house. You said you were looking for a lodger. Yes, Inspector. We had to. But I never dreamed such a thing could happen here, to us. Why, it was only last Thursday night my husband and I were sitting before our fire while we read in the newspaper about the latest murder, the fifth by the Avenger. And I remember saying distinctly, Robert, this Avenger person could be the fellow standing next to you, or maybe the man you bump into. It's a terrible thought. And look here. It says this girl he got last night was like all the others. Pretty blonde, and she'd just come from a music hall, exactly like all the rest of his victims. Ellen, have you stopped to think who fits that description perfectly? Our own Daisy. Shh! What a pretty thought, Bunting. It's a good thing she's with her aunt instead of here. London ain't a safe place for any girl now. Just the same. I can't help thinking how fine it'd be to have her with us. There's no sense even talking about it. We we just can't afford it. I know that, Ellen but I've hoped we could manage anyway. How? Haven't I scrimped myself half crazy trying to keep us going? I know, Ellen. Well, don't you go worrying about it. I think we can get... Who do you suppose that could be? Could it be somebody looking for a room? Oof, I wish it were. Then you could have your daisy back. I went to the front door, and when I opened it, there stood a man wearing a black cape and hat. He carried but a single piece of luggage. Good evening, sir. Uh, I saw your sign. It says you have a room to rent. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Please, please, won't you come in? Thank you. Could I... could I take your cape, sir? No. uh, I'm looking for a quiet room. But, But it should be very quiet. Oh, we have that, sir. Just that. Above all, our house is quiet. Your bag, sir. May may I take it? No. Just show me the room, please. Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, sir. It's right up these stairs, sir. This way. You see, sir, there's just my husband and me here, and we're ever so quiet. I'm sure you'll find this room to your liking. Here we are. Hmm. I think I like this room. It is pleasant, isn't it, sir? There's not many rooms with such pretty pictures now, is there? Mm, I don't know. Pretty pictures interest me very little. What I like about the room is the simplicity. I like the bareness. I think I'll take it. What is your name? Mrs. Bunting, sir. All right, Mrs. Bunting. I'll take the room. Yes, sir. And please, sir, let me help you with your luggage. No, don't you touch it. Um, I only wish to... You only wish to help, of course. I understand, Mrs. Uh, Bunting. Uh, it's... Uh, forgive me. It's just that I'm... I'm I'm so very weary. I'm tired. I do a lot of studying. Of course, sir. Of course. You can see how few things I need. Just what's in this bag. But this... This is my favorite book. The Bible. Yes. It says... He brings them to their desired haven. Beautiful words, huh? And now at last, I've found my haven of rest. 
If I pay you thirty shillings a week for this room, is that satisfactory? Thir- uh, what? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. That that'll be quite all right. My name is Sleuth. S L E U T H. Think of a hound, Mrs. Bunting, and you'll never forget my name. And here are your thirty shillings. Thank you, sir. And would you be wishing for anything now? Supper, tea? No, uh, nothing. Good night, Mrs. Bunting. Yes. G- good night, sir. <laughs> Please stop that! You hear? Oh, uh, sir, what did I do? You were, you were humming. That's music. But I, I, I'm. S- music is an instrument of sin. And you did tell me, Mrs. Bunting, that your house would be absolutely quiet. It is, sir. I, I didn't mean any harm. Believe me, sir. I believe you. I'm sorry I spoke sharply. I know you are trying to be considerate and kind. I think I would like some bread and some tea. Certainly, sir. I'll I'll have it in an instant. So he took the room, eh, Ellen? He took the room, oh, and at thirty shillings a week. In advance. Hurry now, Bunting. Is the water for the tea hot yet? Yes. Oh, what a stroke of luck. Put the bread and the butter on the tray. I'll pour the water. You know, Ellen, it's wonderful. Do you realize what this means? We can have Daisy back with us now. I know, I know. Hurry with it now. Why, we can have her back here tomorrow. Now, uh, there's the water, the tea, it's... It's all ready. All right. Open the door, Bunting. I'll take it up to him right away. There you go, old girl. First thing in the morning, I'm going to fetch Daisy and bring her home. Oh, it's a wonderful night, Ellen. Wonderful. <laughs> I don't... Oh. oh, no, I mustn't. We've cast down many wounded from her. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Come in. And to know the wickedness of folly... Oh, Mr. Sleuth, you... Yes? What is it? Those pictures, those those pretty girls, you've turned all their faces to the wall. Yes, I've turned them to the wall because they're wicked and sinful. But, sir, I... Don't you agree, Mrs. Bunting, that everything wicked and sinful should be purged from the earth? Hmm? Yes. Yes, I do. I'm happy to hear that, Mrs. Bunting. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to leave. Sir, here, here's your tray. Good night, Mrs. Bunting. You know, for a moment I was stiff with fear. I set the tray down. He hadn't so much as noticed the light supper I'd prepared for him and rushed to the window to watch. He came out of our cottage and moved down the street, his black cape swirling about him. Finally, he was lost in the fog, and I I don't know why, but I stared after him for a long while. Well, I did the dishes and got ready for bed. I lay there thinking, and it was almost dawn before I had convinced myself at most he was a trifle odd. And after all, he was paying thirty shillings a week. Maybe he had the right to his strange ways. It was daylight when I was suddenly awakened by the newsboys' shouts in the streets. Horrible murder! Read all about it! Murder at King's Cross last night! Avenger strikes again! Extra special! Slowly I realized what the newsboys were shouting. Horrible murder! Avenger takes sixth victim! Oh! Oh no! Avenger at work again. Another girl falls victim to his knife. Avenger strikes again. And now, Mrs. Bunting, what did you do the morning you learned the Avenger had murdered his sixth victim? Well, I was a little frightened to meet our lodger, yet I kept my thoughts to myself. After all, there still wasn't much to go on. Robert had gone to meet Daisy, so Mr. Sleuth ate breakfast alone. I watched him through the crack in the door. 
Finally, I went in with more tea. No, no, thank you, Mrs. Bunting. I don't care for any more tea. Thank you. You've been very kind. I, I must go on with my work now, if you'll excuse me. My fear really changed to pity then. He seemed so helpless and tired, and he was so considerate. This man couldn't be a murderer. It, it was all a coincidence. Besides, we just couldn't afford to lose the thirty shillings a week. Around ten in the morning, he left the cottage and I decided to go upstairs and have a look about his room. I had to find out what he carried in his one piece of luggage. It wasn't a bag. It was more like a, a case. Yes, a case. A, a case for a knife. I rushed upstairs, my heart beating wildly at the thought I had had of the case. There wasn't anything in his closet. I went over to the chest of drawers against the walls. Nothing in the top one. And in the next one, there were some socks and underclothes. The next one was empty. There was only one other place for the small, narrow case. The bottom drawer. I pulled it, and I pulled at it, and then suddenly, I heard the front door open and downstairs. In a panic, I rushed out of the room and down the hall. Oh, you're upstairs, Ellen. Look, look, Ellen. Daisy's here. Oh, Mother, it's so good to see you. It's so good to be home. Oh, it's, a, uh, it's, um... Why, whatever's the matter? Yes, you're quite white, Ellen. I'm, I'm, all, I'm all right. I'm all right. It's just that I wasn't expecting you so soon. Well, it's good to be back. The country's all right, but there's nothing like London now, is there? No. No, there isn't. Well, as long as that Avenger's out and about, you're going to have to do something to keep this young lady indoors. London or no London. Oh, don't you worry. Mother will see to that. <laughs> well, Daisy, I, I might as well get you settled. You see, Father? what I tell you? She'll have a dustcloth in my hand before I have my coat off. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sleuth. Why is my door open? We... Well, we were just leaving, sir. Have you been in my room? Oh, not at, not at all, sir. From now on, Mrs. Bunting, I shall keep my room locked. But you see, sir, I was just tidying up a bit, and Mr. Bunting, he brought our daughter home, and she just arrived at... And th th this is Daisy. Pleased to meet you, sir. She's been away for quite a while. That's why we're a bit excited, you see. You were probably surprised to hear us laughing and carrying on. Yes. Yes, I must say, I was. But then there are different kinds of joy. Are there not, Daisy? Yes, I'm sure there are. Yes, there is the despicable, evil joy of the abandoned, and there is the divine happiness of the blessed. A great difference. You understand that, don't you, Daisy? Why, yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Sleuth. There are so few young women nowadays who do. Why, Mr. Sleuth, you mean a girl's not to enjoy life at all? Not to have any fun? Enjoyment and fun, my child, are the devil's breeding ground. All his implements are there. Pleasure, impropriety, the temptation of music, dancing. Oh, that's crazy. Why, there's nothing I like better than dancing, and I'm not. You like to dance? She didn't know what she was saying, Mr. Sleuth. Just a child. Daisy, you've never been one for dancing. You've never learned how to. But I did learn, Mother, while I was away. What's so wrong about it? What's the harm in dancing? And she lies in wait as for prey, and increases the transgressors among men. I don't know what you mean. I've never heard such nonsense. Nonsense? You call the scripture nonsense? Daisy? Daisy, go into the front room. It's all right, Mrs. Bunting. It's, it's all right. I'm used to such kind of talk. Good day. Daisy. Daisy, listen to me. Yes, Mother? I've got to tell you about... Uh, about the... About what? Nothing. I've got to go out for a while now. I'll be back. For a moment, I was about to tell my awful suspicions, but I stopped. They were only suspicions. At the same time, I had a thought. I'd go to the coroner's inquest they were having into the Avenger's latest victim. I was hoping to hear something said that would clear my suspicions of the lodger. At least, I'd give him this last chance. A lady was testifying as I took my seat. She'd seen the Avenger from her window, she said, and her description of him didn't tally with Mr. Sleuth. 
I can't tell you how relieved I was, till it was pointed out she couldn't possibly have seen anyone that night from her window because of the fog. The next witness was Mrs. Connaught. I leaned forward anxiously as they swore her in and began asking questions. You say, Mrs. Connaught, you're positive you saw this man. Positive, sir. It was only a few moments before the murder that I saw the Avenger. Describe him. He wore a black cape, I believe, and was very gaunt-looking, and was carrying a small handbag. A handbag? Yes, a small, narrow handbag. Such a one that might contain a knife. Silence! Silence in the court! He had a low, hesitating voice. An educated man, I judge, but quite mad. What do you mean by that? Well, as he emerged from the fog, he was talking aloud to himself. Believe me, sir, he was reciting scriptures from the Bible. Could there be any doubt about it now? Mr. Sleuth, our lodger, was the murderer. I got out of the courtroom as quick as I could. I didn't even notice it had started to rain. I hardly remember going home, running and walking somehow, while slowly the nightmare of fear and terror grew bigger and bigger inside of me. It was three streets from our cottage that I saw Mr. Robert Bunting. One thought hit me clearly. I realized Daisy must be home alone with the Avenger. Bunting! Bunting! Why, Ellen! Ellen, what is it? Bunting, where's Daisy? Where is she? I say, where's Daisy? Why, she's at home. Listen, Bunting, listen. Sleuth is the Avenger. What? What are you talking about? Our lodger. He's the Avenger. Daisy's alone with him right now. Hurry! Listen to me carefully, my child. Rejoice with me in your heart, for the moment is at hand. You're not afraid, Daisy, are you? No, I'm not afraid. You're very beautiful, and you should live in the ways of righteousness. You hear me, Daisy? You want to live in the ways of righteousness, don't you? Yes, yes I do. I know you do, and that is why I've been sent to purge your soul, so that you will be elevated beyond all sin and evil. You like to dance, Daisy, don't you? Six have gone on before you, and they are beyond all sin and evil. You are the seventh to be elevated, my child. And my work is almost done, for the seventh I have promised at this appointed hour. Oh! Be still, Daisy. Daisy? And don't listen Daisy. to the temptations Daisy. of the crowd when they call Daisy, out your name, you? because I am here Daisy. to save you from all evil and wickedness it that consume you free. like a wildfire of scarlet Help and me. crimson. You Daisy, like to dance, you don't you? Yes, I do. Look at me, my there. child, I know and don't is. fear me. Daisy, and do Daisy, not open the tremble. Door. Open it. Woe to them that open call it, evil say. good out, and Ellen. good evil and put in. darkness Hurry, for light and light hurry. for darkness. Give and therefore, I must bring you down Daisy. like the lamb She's to slaughter. And I lift my hand with a flaming sword. For now comes the vengeance and the time to rejoice. Stop him. Stop him, he'll kill her. Daisy, come here. Drop that knife, you fiend. Drop it! Oh, mother! Mother! Thank heaven! You're safe! You're safe! Drop that knife, you! Take your hand away! Let go of me! Get away! Don't you know that such that are for death to death, and such that are for the sword to the sword, and no one dare have pity on them? Watch out! Daisy! His knife! His knife! Uh, uh, uh. Mercy! He fell on the knife! Yes, it is burning in me like a fire. Oh, it purges me and consumes me. All sin and evil are falling away. Praise and glory, for it is I who is the seventh. <laughs> yes! The vengeance is fulfilled.
And that concludes our reincarnation of The Lodger from Mystery in the Air and another episode of the Reincarnated Radio Podcast. I'd like to thank Mike Cash for helping me bring this script back to life. And new episodes of the Reincarnated Radio Podcast can be found every Thursday on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Spotify. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram so you never miss an announcement. And leave us a review while you're at it. Tell us what you think. Hopefully this story raised a hair or two. But until next time, that's it for me, Dave Stishin, and the rest of us at the Reincarnated Radio Podcast, where we scared your grandpappy first. (laughs) 